Here for more on this shift is Michelle Krebs, Cox Automotive Executive Analyst, and Andre Shepard, Cantor Fitzgerald Senior Analyst. It's great to have you both along. Michelle, let's just start with what we know about how much of the, I think it's safe to say we've all been surprised at the speed to which globally we've switched to EVs. Will America always lag? It seems like that. I think we're asking a lot of the consumer. Um, one of the biggest obstacles to EV adoption here in the U.S. is the price. Um, the average uh, electric vehicle costs $58,000. Now, that's lower than it was last year at $66,000, but it's still higher than the, the $48,000 of a new vehicle. So it knocks a lot of people out of the math, just knocks a lot of people out of the market. Sure. So basically, even though respondents themselves are worried about EV charging, you think price. I mean, listen, price can be solved. You know, at some point, the government, as it's trying to do, can just start handing rebates out right and left. And, and it seems like what people and consumers are saying, Michelle, is that they're skeptical that even if they could afford an EV, that it's kind of ready for showtime. Well, right. And the, the, I was I was going to say the second obstacle to adoption is that EV charging infrastructure um, there. It's growing. But one of the big complaints we're hearing now is that when people get to those charging stations, they aren't maintained, they're they're broken. So we've not only got to build out the uh, charging infrastructure, we've also got to figure out a way to keep it maintained. Andres, can the charging infrastructure be ramped up sufficiently in time to meet what appears to be very uh, ambitious uh, plans from the Biden administration, which could, of course, be reversed in a, in a new administration? Right. And uh, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for having us back on. And so we, we think that is the case. You know, according to Bloomberg, there were over uh, 10.5 million EV sold last year uh, in the U.S. That number was over 800,000, which represented roughly a 70 percent increase year over year. And that's despite the economic environment that we are in. As you alluded to, EVs in this country accounted for roughly 7 percent of all vehicles sold. But in places like California, that number is significantly higher, around 19 percent. And so we are seeing an uptick in demand, and we expect that to continue. And we remain uh, bullish from both Rivian and on Lucid over the long term. I think the issue that we are seeing is around production and supply. Both Rivian and Lucid have guided how many vehicles they expect to deliver this year. For Rivian, that's 50,000. For Lucid, that's uh, 10 to 14,000. By comparison, Tesla delivered 1.3 mm -hmm. million vehicles uh, last year. We don't cover Tesla, but they are guiding to deliver 1.8 million vehicles this year. So they're still, in fact, a market leader, although we are seeing that market uh, share begin to diminish. And in our view, that's a result of them no longer having the best vehicles out there. You look at Lucid, and they've been able to achieve a battery range of 520 miles, which is confirmed by the EPA, and we think that's an important differentiator. So it'll be interesting to see how quickly these companies can continue to ramp up their production.